Are you able to see my slide? Yes. Greetings, everyone. A warm welcome to the special edition, Exchanging Ideas, Global 5G Evolution. Please take a minute to click the subscribe button on your YouTube channel, Global 5G Evolution. Now, 5G for mobile network operators um, should consider build out the 5G infrastructure based on the eight key service capabilities. As you can see, these are the main key service capabilities based from the uh, reference of uh, Verizon US. And those are the throughput, service deployment, mobility, connected devices, energy efficiency, data volume, latency, and reliability. Now, mobile network operators should make investments in fiber, additional spectrum, especially in the millimeter wave spectrum, high network density and small cell um, infrastructure. The point here is um, a company can't just decide to what they want to offer 5G and be ready in a few months. It takes years of deliberate planning, testing and innovation. So what does this mean for business customers? How can companies and um, government and public safety agencies take advantage of 5G technology and build for the future? Now let's look into the throughput and the service deployment. Now 5G will ultimately enable um, peak data rates of 10 gigabits. And this throughput will enable things like autonomous vehicles, drive manufacturing efficiencies and support AR, VR solutions, and also the remote healthcare services. And uh, mobile network operators should or start or already working with uh, entrepreneurs and innovators as they build this and other 5G applications that will change our world. The real-time enterprise will be powered by 5G, right? And 5G and um, network virtualization, which means using software to perform network functions. And um, this enables service and applications deployment without having to install additional hardware. And this fasters the de deployment times, and um, it will allow MNO to roll out new features and um, security improvements quickly to address the dynamic needs of MNO customers. When it comes to the mobility and the connected devices, 5G is designed to enable devices traveling up to 500 kilometers per hour to stay connected to the network. So 5G network handoff techniques involve to enable passengers in fast moving vehicles and trains to stay connected while they are moving. 5G will eventually be able to support up to 1 million connected devices per square kilometer. And this allow critical cities like to tap into the power of 5G and smart street lights, remote security, monitoring and intelligent rail and smart park, um, parking solutions. When it comes to the um, latency and data volume, 5G's latency means the time it takes for data to travel from the users over the network to the central processor and back again will be one of the drivers of true technological change. Especially, you know, it takes like a blink of an eye, less than 10 milliseconds end-to-end response time. We have already witnessed AR, VR, and autonomous vehicles, but 5G will allow doctors and first responders to get data um, intensive information like full body scans and building plans in seconds. So the 5G standard was designed to support up to 10 terabits of data per square kilometer. This means the 5G network will carry a massive amount of data for a large number of simultaneous um, users. Now, the, the other part is the energy efficiency and the reliability. 5G will have a lower energy requirements from MNO network operators up to 90% less than 4G. For customers using 5G network, complex functions could happen closer to the end user. And that means the end user's device would require less processing capability and consume less energy and battery power. So 5G should offer reliability 99.999% that business can count on at critical uh, uh, moments, right? Moving on to the next slide. This is quite interesting slides when it comes to the 5G network slicing. That means quality of service. 5G is designed as a network with a radio access component, backhaul and core network, and it is 
can deliver superior quality of service mechanism, including the license frequency bands, which reduce interference issues from other wireless devices. Network slicing, which is powerful QoS mechanism, extending it into the backhaul and core provides an end-to-end -end quality of service for applications. As an example, it will facilitate line of business within enterprises in achieving individual uh, business customers. So some of the customers might have some kind of uh, uh, a QAS or KPI that is very much focusing on the enhanced mobile broadband. Some customers might be very much focused into the machine to machine critical communications and some would have focused reliable low latency. So, so those network slicing feature can be actually um, fixed to the, those specific needs. And this is the most interesting part when it comes to the comparison uh, of the uh, 5G and Wi-Fi 6. Now, Wi-Fi 6 is a type of a local area network used primarily for indoors, for example, inside a home or workplace like the 5G network used by major operators, cellular net networks, a uh, type of a wide area network used both for indoors and outdoors, but it's best suited for the outdoors, generally over long distances. Wi-Fi 6 will continue to be access choice for indoor networks with improvements in speed, latency, and higher density of connected devices. And Wi-Fi 6 is ideal for indoor enterprise networks and it's also an ideal system in areas where access points will serve more users such as stadiums and, uh, and uh, connected uh, uh, convention centers. 5G will be the designated choice for outdoor networks. The early business cases include fixed wireless, connected cars, drones, and smart cities, um, makes it the preferred method Wi-Fi 6 is optimized for capacity and density, where 5G is optimized for the coverage. Wi-Fi 6 used unlicensed spectrum. However, 5G LTE networks use typically uh, area managed by operators and use a dedicated license spectrum that uh, requires subscription fees um, to access. If we see over here, uh, where these are the comparisons between Wi-Fi 6, 4G, and 5G. And this is uh, a reference to the Accenture analysis. And as you see on, on the key strength of the 5G, which, which involves into the latency, the mobility, coverage, and also the security portion, right? But however, businesses and operators uh, stand to gain a great deal from the seamless integration of Wi-Fi and cellular access in the 5G networks. That means there must be some sort of a convergence together. And uh, because Wi-Fi 6 has its own strength and 5G has its own strength, and as I've mentioned earlier. And when it comes to the, uh, uh, for industry 4.0, the potential use of both 5G new radios and Wi-Fi access dramatically improves the connectivity and the traffic steering um, on the factory floor across both access, facilitating greater utility of um, artificial intelligence and um, machine learning. For the smart city, 5G new radio and Wi-Fi access can interoperate to create uninterrupted connections and traffic to data hungry edge applications and can be more easily uh, managed. This is quite an interesting slide um, from Dodge Telecom, right? And they were actually applying the converged architecture between the uh, Wi-Fi 6 and the, uh, the 5G uh, radio access network. Dodge Telecom wanted to target certain use cases and they wanted to address the value first and they wanted value for their end customers and their end consumers. And Dodge Telecom wanted customers to be always best connected. They also wanted to value that they have um, hybrid routers at the um, residential areas or the, uh, or the enterprise uh, areas, right? So, and, uh, and, and let them connect it through the uh, fixed wireline and also through the uh, mobile, right? So that, you know, can use both simultaneously um, or one at a time. 
and also Dutch Telecom wanted enterprise users to have uh, high reliability and high capacity. Essentially, these are the values Dutch Telecom wanted to focus on with the help of the 3GPP um, and the broadband forum. Now, this is the st standardization part where they have used with the help of the 3GPP and the broadband forum. And uh, now 5G became a lot more concrete um, in the way they address the convergence, right? And uh, the two main major points that happening in 5G is the AT, triple S, and the multipath. Now, AT, triple S is a policy framework that would allow the network to tell the device how and when to connect and what to connect to and what the mode of connection. And multipath is the mechanism that you can actually use both access simultaneously, right, in parallel. So you can split the flows and enjoy uh, the superposition of the two access together. This is defined in release 16 early last year and will be in subsequent releases. The other part is happening is the wireless wireline convergence architecture. And it's also released beginning last year. And it's a cooperation between 3GPP and broadband forum so that they put together this convergence architecture, which is related to the evolution of the uh, broadband network gateways to be accessed the gateway functions. Now, let me take you through what is AT triple S. AT triple S means um, access traffic steering, switching and splitting. And this is the steering. Steering means either Wi-Fi or cellular at a time. And splitting, which means you are using both simultaneously, right? And um, this is uh, the framework of the AT triple S, the policy framework that, that 5G has been um, introduced. Now, if we step back to this 5G architecture, this anchor point here is the user claim function of the 5G core, right? And um, so that you can seamlessly go through the fixed network, right, to the UPF of the 5G core and the cellular path, right, to the 5G core and terminated to the UPF to the internet. So more or less this AT triple S and multi-path is a lot of value in terms of the throughput and um, uh, capacity and also the reliability. Now, uh, this is the, uh, uh, the world first POC that Dodge Telecom has actually introduced. What we have here is that Dodge Telecom made this uh, proof of concept in October, 2020. And the second trial was recently in February, 2021. Dodge Telecom got an AGV and installed a software that is um, um, internally developed by DT, right? And uh, the proxy, which also uh, DT development, and it is a multi-path TCP proxy, um, essentially. So DT used the client to connect to the proxy and then connect to the AGV controller. So the AGV requires a continuous control signal to move. If you stop the control signal, it stops moving. So what DT have done is that the DT connected through the multi-path through the Wi-Fi and the 5G networks, right, to, to make move the vehicle. So what they have done is they either they stopped the Wi-Fi gateway device and they tested only the uh, 5G and uh, vice versa, they stopped the 5G and then tried uh, the Wi-Fi. And, um, and the AGV continuously moved, right, without any interruption, right? So that, therefore it proved that the simultaneous connectivity was doing pretty well. So in summary, what I would like to say that uh, based on some of the key points that it was high highlighted by Verizon here, that Wi-Fi seek has its own um, advantages like mainstream enterprise wireless solutions that outperforms 5G in terms of the uh, spectrum, terminal ecosystem, network costs, ease of deployment, flex flexibility and management requirements. But the disadvantages of the Wi-Fi 6 is Wi-Fi 6 does not perform well in large scale outdoor coverage. 
scenarios and and it cannot meet the ultra low latency requirements right and uh, 5g advantage is it's leading wireless technology that outperforms wi-fi 6 in terms of memo uh, service uh, latency mobile roaming and outdoor um, coverage the only disadvantage i would see is that the cost of deploying 5g networks for indoor is pretty um, high so that is the summary uh, of my presentation today. And um, I would like to introduce Alex Besson from Washington, DC, USA. Alex provides the um, strategic uh, advisory, business development, uh, market research and training services in the mobile data industry. He has over 26 years of hands-on experience in the mobile industry, working for operators and vendors in numerous roles, um, including the business development, marketing, project management, and finance. He has been working with operators and entrepreneurs in developing the digital transformation strategies and advising MVNOs um, to launch the mobile services. Previously, he worked at Ericsson, targeting operators and MVNOs in EMEA region. At T-Mobile USA and Pocket, he was responsible for business development activities. He holds a BS degree from the University of Tampa and an MBA degree from the American University. Let's welcome Alex Besson to present the TCO analysis Wi-Fi 6 versus 5G. Handing over to you, Alex. Thank you, Tanish. Welcome everybody. Yeah, today uh, I wanted to go over a recent tool that we have released uh, this week uh, comparing uh, Wi-Fi 6 versus private 5G total cost of ownership tool. Uh, so uh, before I start into the uh, my uh, uh, tool, I wanted to give you a brief overview of our uh, company. Uh, we are founded in 2004 in the state of Virginia. Uh, we are specialist mobile data industry with subject matter expertise in the mobile wholesale business. We have cumulative 127 years of experience, hands-on experience from the telecom industry from the US, Europe, and Asia. And uh, we offer strategy consultancy, business development, training, and market research services with a network of independent consultants globally. Our clients include the mobile operators, enterprises, NDNOs, NDNEs, mobile vendors, investment banks, hedge funds, and private equity firms. Uh, some of our public references include the following companies. Uh, you know, uh, we work with the uh, system integrators like Altran, uh, big uh, BSS OSS vendors like MDOX, uh, mobile operators like Cosmot, uh, Turk Telecom, Orange, uh, and some satellite operators include Global Star, Ligata Networks, Speedcast, and uh, some uh, key vendors, Ericsson, Nokia is off the wall. Uh, so some of our international experience include the following countries uh, as of uh, past uh, year. And uh, in terms of our experience from the prior networks, uh, we have worked so far on four different uh, use cases. Uh, we work on one of the first uh, biggest uh, agriculture use case in the US uh, for private 4G and private 5G uh, client uh, over CBR spectrum. And uh, we have uh, worked on a private uh, 4G and 5G for automobile manufacturing, a client here in the US again. And uh, we worked on a 4G and a 5G smart city project as well here in the US, jointly with a cable operator. And uh, we worked on a private network uh, oil field project uh, in uh, Texas uh, this year as well. Uh, so these are some of our uh, references from private networks. Uh, in terms of our, our capabilities, uh, we offer business case development, strategy planning, partnership development, marketing product launches, market research and competitive analysis, project management, auction strategy, license application, and segmentation. Uh, we offer uh, the following seminars uh, on our either virtually today or we can do it on site within three weeks advance notice. Our latest seminar includes the private 5G and private LTE seminar 
And we also offered a seminar uh, jointly with the key trade associations like Mobile World Congress and GSMS uh, Shop here in the US. Uh, we have uh, offered that in 2019 uh, at the pilot LTE uh, seminar. And we will be offering that uh, pilot 5G probably next year at the Mobile World Congress in Los Angeles. Uh, so uh, some of our tools, uh, tools uh, uh, we're gonna go over the Wi-Fi 6 versus CBS pilot 5G tool today. And uh, uh, all our tools are, include uh, some of our market research uh, uh, data, uh, assumptions and, um, and uh, inputs that uh, we can uh, use to compare, uh, to run our tools. Uh, to have decision-making process for the executives as well as for our clients, right? Uh, so we have the industry first tools available for the Wi-Fi 6 versus private 5G. We have the Wi-Fi 6 versus private LTE. Uh, we have the CBS private LTE tool, and we have the CBS mutual host tools. And then next month uh, or, or in two months, we're going to be uh, launching a private 5G tool, uh, just a standalone CCO tool. Uh, so all tools are available on corporate license basis. Uh, the price includes the telephone consultation with the consultant to explain the uh, methodology, assumptions, and input. Uh, so today's topic is on the our uh, TCO to comparing Wi-Fi 6 versus uh, private 5G. Uh, so uh, the way we have built our tools, uh, we follow this, uh, this process, the methodology uh, or modeling. And then we we'll look at the you know, market demand, uh, looking at the definition, uh, looking at the, the size you know, the, uh, of the opportunity. And then we can compare Wi-Fi, we can compare wireline, we can compare all different technologies as well, side by side. And then uh, we look at the enterprise positioning or company positioning to see what will be the uh, deployment and market share uh, in that uh, segment. And we look at the capex line items. You know, uh, looking at the dimensioning, which is the key thing. Uh, what is the coverage of a geographic area? Can be a manufacturing uh, in a factory floor. It can be an enterprise, uh, like a commercial real estate building, a smart city, uh, or venue, right? And we look at the network capacity, uh, and then uh, we look at the opex line items. Uh, looking at the interconnection warming and if there is an uh, opportunity there for them to consider those site acquisition and rentals uh, for deployment of uh, small sales, uh, macro sales, uh, operations and maintenance. And then uh, when we look at operating expenses, at the end, uh, we look at the key financial indicators, uh, you know, looking at NPV, IRR, you know, just to, to make a decision accordingly for this uh, investment opportunity. So our tool is divided into two categories. Uh, we have it uh, divided by devices. Uh, we have it divided by square footage. So for uh, depending on the, what the use case we are uh, looking to deploy this tool, you know, for square footage, you know, we can use it on a, I would say, dedicated uh, like a factory, right? Uh, so we, we can look at the factory floor, uh, find out what is the square footage, and then we can look at it, uh, you know, uh, deployment. Uh, opportunity based on that. Or if you look at the devices, uh, that's going to be more appropriate for deploying, let's say, for smart cities, right? So how many devices, IoT devices, will the smart city will need to connect the buses or the electrical system or the water system, etc. So the, the data uh, from both square footage and devices, it fit into a small cell dimensioning engine. Uh, this is the key thing. Uh, because uh, with this uh, engine, then we can determine how many small private 5G small cells will need and how many Wi-Fi small cells or Wi-Fi nodes do we, we need uh, for this deployment, right? Uh, this is, again, is required to, to compare apples to apples, right? Uh, so uh, from the, the data, again, from the square footage and devices fits into our 5G core dimens dimensioning engine in order to calculate you know, our 5G core based on number of small cells or based on number of subscribers or devices, right? Uh, sometimes referred as, as well. Uh, so we will need that. Uh, and then that way we can uh, determine, you know, uh, what is our CapEx inputs will be. Uh, so in this uh, uh, slide, you will see that our 5G core as a CapEx planet is on promise, right? Uh, 
uh, they will have it as a uh, on the OPEX line item as well on the cloud, or they will have it as a managed service as well. Uh, for CapEx line item, uh, we have it uh, priced as a dollar per small cell or dollar per subscriber, right? Uh, we will have it also on a dollar per uh, gigabyte on a bandwidth basis. Uh, you know, if, if the customer is interested to measure that, we can do that as well. So in the CapEx line uh, uh, inputs, we have the small cells, we have the network design cost, we have the license fee for the spectrum. Uh, again, uh, Maybe there is no license fee, but this is optional, right? So in the, in the US, you know, for CDI spectrum can be licensed or you know, can be unlicensed, right? So we have that option to plug in that price there. And we have installation cost as well. So that gives us our CapEx uh, you know, line items. On the OPEX, uh, uh, you can look at from the 5G core again, you know, uh, we can have it either as on the cloud uh, you know, one of the cloud providers, uh, or we have it as a managed service, right? Again, depending on the deployment business model, uh, the client that can pick and choose which one they want to you know, implement into the tool. And then other national, uh, like OPEX line item include hardware, software, maintenance and support, uh, which, which is about, I would say 10 to 15% of the total uh, network core, like five, five G core. And then the MNO and the 5G core connectivity, and depending on how many uh, you know, MNOs that you are, you need to connect to, I will say, you know, uh, you know so it can, we can have it up to four in the US, but it varies, you know, uh, based on your region where you're based, right? Uh, utilities, you know, and then backhaul and interconnection roaming. Again, that depends on how many uh, roaming partners you will want to have or interconnection partners uh, you need to have uh, for your network. Uh, so uh, when looking at the, the CapEx summary, and uh, we will have the you know, indoor uh, small cells here, and that is small cell installation cost, and material cost, switching cost, network design cost, equipment room cost, license fee, we left it as blank, and then a 5G core on promise cost. Right? So that gives us our total CapEx number. Uh, then uh, we look at the OPEX line items here. Uh, we selected not to have the cloud uh, as an OPEX. So we skip that. And we look at the hardware software maintenance that's based on the network core uh, from the CAPEX. Network operations management that's uh, based again on the network core from the CAPEX line item is about, uh, I would say, 2% of the total cost of the network uh, core equipment. And then we have the MNO and 5G connectivity. We have the utilities, the backhaul. Uh, we said there is no interconnection here. And, uh, and then we have the edge computing uh, the cost as well. Uh, we assume that this will be deployed in a factory. Uh, so they will need to be able to you know, leverage the mobile edge compute uh, solution for 5G. Uh, so uh, that's based on the number of small cells as well. Uh, so uh, in terms of the, sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, in terms of the uh, why, uh, let's look at the Wi-Fi. Sorry, uh, so that's the uh, yeah. Got that okay. So in terms of the total cost uh, ownership summary for Pilot 5G, uh, it shows that uh, in the first year, you know, we have 96 percent of the capex uh, cost, you know, uh, and then moving forward, 100 percent will be on the as the opex. Uh, percentage of total, uh, total cost of ownership. You're looking at about uh, $20 per subscriber uh, uh, for the OPEX and $449 for the CAPEX in the first year. Total cost of ownership is about the $469 and then uh, 400, uh, $483 per subscriber. Uh, continuously and is about $16 per gigabyte you know, for this uh, 5G network. Uh, let's look at the uh, Wi-Fi 6 now, a deployment cost for that. Uh, so that gives us about the you know, Wi-Fi nodes or small cells uh, and the installation, materials, switching, network design, equipment room, room and uh, you know, additional cost about 26,000 uh, the first deployment there. Uh, on the OPEX line, uh, looking at about hardware software maintenance, network operations, utilities, 
backhaul and edge computing as well on Wi-Fi 6, you're looking at about the $11,000 there. Uh, so that's a continuously on the every year. So that gives us about the, you know, 70% of the CapEx line item, uh, and 30% of the OPEX, that gives us about $17 per subscriber, $29 per CapEx per sub. Uh, total square footage per sub is about $3.15. Uh, and uh, looking at the $472 per subscriber, the total cost, and the $15.74 per gigabyte. So it's a bit lower than the pilot 5G. That's, I think you expected that as well, but you have the, as Kamish mentioned, that the advantages of pilot 5G versus Wi-Fi 6 deploying this in a factory setting, right? So uh, this is it with my presentation. Uh, you can also visit our website uh, to download the limited version of our tool, uh, but I'm ready to answer your questions now, uh, Kamish. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for your presentation. Um, maybe I'll start with this um, question on uh, based on uh, the uh, market sentiment in uh, in US uh, when it comes to the big uh, operators like uh, AT and T, Verizon, Sprint. Um, when they do a business model, uh, just uh, a, a, a general question: um, What kind of parameters they base when it comes to the total? Cost of ownership. Do you have any idea? Yeah. So uh, I would say the operators they look at the, you know, the specific industry segments. Can you, uh, you know, looking at the, I would say manufacturing, uh, you know, healthcare, uh, transportation, oil and gas. You know, so they are looking at very targeted industries, and then within those industries, they they need to get a hands off. You know, dedicated uh, you know uh, the sites of the opportunity. You know, what is the square footage I'm talking about, right? So this is a, a bit different than uh, what are they used to in the past. You know, uh, uh, because they are used to offering it to most public you know, uh, services to the consumers. So this is more targeted to the niche industry. So they need to understand what each industry is required. You know, requirement is. So it is a bit different. So they need to customize the business model based on this, uh, uh, you know, the data that they need to get from mining, you know, from utilities, you know, the manufacturing as well. So, uh, so they need to look at the size, the parameters of the, you know, the opportunity, you know, uh, and then the usage in terms of uh, how many devices I'm talking about, what is the throughput uh, it, it required for each device, and uh, etc. Right. Thank you. Um, the other question was that uh, um, based on the, the tool that you presented, um, uh, do, do you take account the, uh, the power um, energy efficiency um, uh, into, into, your, uh, into your calculation? No, we didn't do that, Kanish. No, we don't oh. have the power and efficiency in our tool. Yeah, we oh. have power, but uh, we, didn't, uh, we didn't count the power efficiency, no. All right. Um, how about in terms of the um, uh, the KPIs and uh, reliability in terms of the quality of service, uh, like for example, the availability ninety nine point nine nine was that taken into account as well? Yeah, it's it's hard to uh, quantify those. Okay. You know the, yeah. The, uh, I mean, yes, it, it is an important factor to consider choosing a private five G versus Wi Fi six, but yeah. it's very hard to quantify them, you know, so we didn't, uh, our tool does not include those. Yeah. All right. Okay. Any other questions on board? Yes. So a quick and rather general one here. Uh, I can today get up and just set up a Wi-Fi network I'm pretty easy. And it could be home or a little bigger than that. Uh, but 5G, you know, it, it takes quite a bit of work. You know, you have to apply for license and so on and so forth. So I'm just wondering, is there something technically limiting people from implementing um, Wi-Fi based networks that are bigger and cover more area? Like, you know, a whole city, for example, or is it that we have traditionally thought of mobile networks to 
to, to use the kinds of infrastructure that 5G uses. I'm wondering whether it's a technical thing or it's a tradition that we have less deployments of Wi-Fi uh, on, a, on a big scale as large networks. Yeah, I mean, in, in my, I, I can answer that question, Kanish, and then you can respond as well, I think. Yeah, I, uh, I think the Wi-Fi 6, as Kanish you know, shared in his presentation, is mostly used for indoors, right? So it is a, mm -hmm. a great uh, technology for indoor use cases. Uh, when it comes, when it comes to for outdoor use case, you know, it becomes a bit more, you know, a weak in terms of the coverage, you know, uh, you know so uh, is then at, at that time, you will need a more mobile network, uh, you know, uh, spectrum, you know, which will have a wide, wider uh, coverage. Uh, mm. So I think the, uh, it's harder to deploy, you know, to uh, Wi-Fi in an outdoor setting. You know, uh, and then um, I think you should focus on it for indoors. But you know, definitely, you know, uh, they can uh, you know work in uh, you know, jointly uh, with the mobile network. You know, uh, side by side. You know, uh, mm -hmm. where you can leverage the mobile network for outdoors, and you can leverage Wi-Fi you know, for indoors. I see. I see. Okay. Thank you. All right. So I think. Uh... Um, that's all for today, and um, um, I would uh, really appreciate uh, for your presence, Alex. Thank you so much uh, for this uh, um, program, and uh, we look forward to see you again. Yes, thank you, Kanish, for the opportunity. I look forward to do another webinar with you in the near future. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.